So we are at the bottom of the hour. So in respect for everyone's time, we're going to go ahead and get started. I'd like to welcome you all to the next installment of our 30 minute workout series, which we're doing uh, bi-weekly. Uh, today, we're going to be diving into how the Autodesk cloud can benefit land surveyors and other folks that uh, have to deal with the field, whether it's uh, field checks or anybody that's a representative in the field. My name is Alan Gilbert. I'm a civil technical specialist with Autodesk, and I will be today's presenter. Assisting me uh, behind the Q&A pane today will be my fellow technical specialist on the civil side at Autodesk, Mr. Angel Espinosa and uh, Mr. Jerry Bartles. So uh, if you have a question, you can pop that in the Q&A pane as we go, and we'll try to address those as we go. And anything we miss, we will address um, at the end of the show or and we will follow up. If you've joined us before, we'd like to welcome you back. If not, just a little bit of flavor or the context around the 30 minute workout concept. We're gonna be taking you through some tip, tips and tricks and maybe some things that you haven't seen before, hopefully, because we know that uh, traditional training a lot of times only covers that very baseline things you need to know to do your job. And uh, we all know you need additional knowledge and functionality that you acquire as the, uh, time goes on. And so we're going to help maybe just help you discover some of those features in this series. That's really the goal. And we're keeping these short and we start on time and end on time. That is the goal. And so we stay within 30 minutes, no matter what, even uh, with my slow talking, I will cut it off at the top of the hour. This session is being recorded, so you will get a follow-up. All the attendees will get a follow-up with info on how to get to the recording and some other neat things that uh, we can uh, talk to you about in that email. So let's get started. <clears throat> the agenda for today is we're going to start with a overview of the BIM 360 cloud platform, which uh, is the focus of today. And the module we'll be discussing today is the document management module. After that, we're gonna talk about getting your data to the cloud and uh, some things you can review in the office. And we're gonna use some of the issue systems to assign some work for the field. Then we're gonna show how you can work with it in the field. If things go well, I'll be even showing my iPhone up on the screen, showing you doing a little work in the field with a little simulated uh, evidence collection. And then on the, um, the great thing is whatever you're doing in the field immediately translates because we're in the cloud. As soon as you sync back or you have access to the web, that will sync back with the office and they will have everything you did and that all the history of what happened uh, as you were collecting data in the field. And that could be a variety of types of data. If we have time, we're going to talk about a little additional use case that I did uh, about record data and uh, input of uh, property descriptions, that kind of thing. So with that said, we're going to get started. This is a PowerPoint free zone. Um, I have one more slide. It's not even really a slide. It's a photo to talk about the pl cloud platform. And that is all. We'll be in the application from then on. So for those who are not familiar with the BIM 360 or the Autodesk BIM 360 cloud platform, it's, it's really bigger than what we're showing today, much bigger. So we're talking about that orange circle in the middle today, which is the document management portion. Think of it as uh, Google drive or your uh, Microsoft OneDrive for civil engineering or for CAD. So if it's going to be a storage system, we have to have that filing cabinet at the core. And that's all we're going to be talking about is that module in the middle, the filing cabinet. And what's great is it does a lot of things on its own uh, other than just store the data and manage the file versions and all that. It does a lot more, uh, such as one of the big items we'll be discussing today is issues. Uh, Typically, we show this as doing design review using the issues and markup systems inside document management for Jerry to send me the PDF of the design and I make some markups maybe or vice versa. And that's really a design review workflow. But what I wanted to show today is more for the field folks. How could we use that same issue system and markup system to benefit us? because it's so flexible and you see, and I hope you can uh, extrapolate that to an application that you might need because it can really be used for anything. But uh, the main reason I show this slide is just to be aware that there's a uh, entire set of modules that can be added to this for design purposes in purple. 
for pre-con or pre-construction in green, all the way down to red and field execution. So for folks that are doing CA or CM work in the field or inspection, we have an entire add-on module to manage things like RFIs and submittals. So I just uh, want to be clear that uh, it's much bigger than what we're showing today, but we're focused here on the document management portion only, which many customers uh, this year uh, have access to uh, for free if they have AEC collections. Okay. So with that said, we're going to jump over. And the first thing is getting data to the cloud. So here I am in a browser. So that's one way to access the BIM 360 cloud or the document management. Here I am and I have a folder structure here. So I can build this, you know, or have a template created for this folder structure. How can I get data in here? I can drag and drop. I can click the upload files button to, to use the browser. Or more commonly, we have a free little installer called the desktop connector. And uh, if you're familiar with Google Drive, you know that they have an add-on and it's built right in to connect your Windows Explorer to Google Drive so that when I go file open in Microsoft Word, I can open it from Google Drive instead of my local drive or server. Same thing here. As soon as you run this free little application, you'll see Autodesk Docs here and you'll see your hub. This is your company's hub. I'm, I'm connected to a bunch, but you would just normally see one or two here. And then if you notice this folder structure mimics exactly what you see in the browser. And so to load data in here, I can just drag and drop here on Windows Explorer like I'm used to, and that will automatically sync with the cloud. And I can see that in the browser. So that's really the recommended way. Now you've probably heard, if you've heard anything about our cloud, you probably heard us say uh, the best way to, to have clean data in the cloud is to copy the pieces and then XREF them after they're in the cloud like with AutoCAD or Civil 3D, for example. And that is the best way, don't get me wrong. But in this case, I didn't do that. I created a project outside of the cloud and I just drug and drop the drawing and it brought all the reference file data in because I didn't care. Now, there is a little bit of implication with that. Just want you to know, I drug in a file called sectional.dgn. It had um, reference files in that. You can see under ortho. And so what happens is you see I have a um, several folder level levels deep that I have to deal with now. Whereas I drug those individually and then did an XREF inside the cloud, I wouldn't have all that. But really for this project, I just wanted this data in the field. So I didn't really care. Okay. So here we know how to get data in here now, but what about reviewing in the office? So here I'm in the office. I've got my data in the cloud. Now everyone that can get to a web browser has access to the full project information. So for example, the client sent, and this is actually a real boundary survey that I did for a family member. And so if I click on this image here that was brought into the cloud, they created this in uh, Google Earth. Okay. So you can see they drug their kind of idea on how they would like to split this property. Okay. So I can view that directly here. I can also, if I go to maps, what I also did is I went ahead and uploaded things that I may need in the field or in the office. So like here's an old right away image of that area that I have at my fingertips. More importantly, I'm gonna have it at my fingertips in the field. Notice this parcel. I downloaded this map from the tax assessor's website here in town. Okay, now just notice later we're gonna talk about we have a markup capability, even on a PDF. And we also have the issue system that we'll be dealing with a lot here. Okay. So all types of data that I have up here to help everyone in the office and especially in the field, I have deed information. So here's some PDF deed information. You can see I've got a two sheet deed here. Okay. So that's great. But now back to the working drawings. So I started doing some sectional boundary work. We're a public land survey state here in Alabama, as many of you know. And so I created a sectional drawing and I attached some imagery. I'm gonna turn those issues off for just a second. And this is what happened. As soon as I go to just click on the drawing in the, the cloud here in the browser, this is what I see. I can see this same view on an iPad or Android or uh, iPhone in the, in the field, which is where it's really gonna lend itself. So I did this research on the section and I brought, I warped in the uh, DOT right away plan close. Okay. So this is ready for the field. Uh, and when I go out in the field, I have this at my fingertips and that's great. 
But what if I wanted to assign some work, you know, while I'm here, you know, maybe I'm the office personnel and I need to tell this particular crew chief that you need to work in this area. Well, I could do one of our markups here. So this is our markup system. I'll just save that markup and you don't have to use a markup. I could just use an issue, but I'm, I'm giving them more little or more descriptive information by doing a markup, but I'm also going to do an issue. So I'm going to click on the issues button over here and I'm going to say, create an issue. Again, an issue can be anything. And I'm just going to drop it in the middle. And I'm going to say, this is a work to complete issue. It's open. And I'm going to say, uh, find all right away monuments in this section of highway. So this crew chief, I only want them working in this section of highway. And my crew chief for today will be Mr. Jerry Bartles because he's in this project. It's due tomorrow because I'm not waiting. And uh, I can put other location details, descriptions to get very descript. And I'm going to hit create. Okay, so it says new issue created. And what happens is uh, if I go into the stay in the sectional drawing here, in this issues list, this will be added to the issues list for this drawing. You can see it there. I can click on it here or over, over on the left side where it says find all right away. Another way to see the issues is the issues list view here. Okay. And I may want to filter because I'm working, people are assigning me issues too. So maybe I only want to see the issues that I've assigned to someone else. So I just want to see the issues that I've assigned to Jerry. And that's just one. So in a list view, I can come back and see the status and see, okay, um, Jerry hasn't done anything here. What's the hold up? But what's also great here is there is a hyperlink directly to that drawing. So maybe I forgot which drawing I'm in. This is a week later, right? It goes straight to that sectional drawing and straight to the location that I was working in. Boom. And it opens the issue. So I just want you to see how flexible these issues are and uh, how they can be used for so many things. All right. So that's really uh, some uh, workflows just for the field. You know, I'm just using data. I'm using markups and issues. Again, remember I said we could do design review or we could do survey review. You could have a surveyor reviewing uh, the drawing or the PDF plan topo set location survey. That issue system, anything you can assign to people, uh, you can use it for that. So let's talk about now that we're in the field. So we drive out to the side here uh, and um, we're ready to do a little work in the field. So I'm gonna try here to get the uh, iPhone up and working. Hopefully it'll reflect on the screen. There we go. Okay, so hopefully that, that uh, shows up okay for everyone. So here I am in the field and this is the same photo structure that you saw before. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on the maps that we saw earlier. And you remember that parcel drawing that I showed you from the tax assessor. What a great thing to have in a field. All that deed information. It's all at our fingertips, right? That record information back here. All those deeds, if I have a question about, because we're always looking for overlapping deeds, do they call the same pen? Well, this pen or this uh, deed called uh, a pen with this cap and this deed called a pen with another cap. So are there two pens there or is that one gone? What's the deal? Okay. And now we're ready to take a look at how we could use issues to collect evidence. That was really the main example I wanted to use for the field. So we're gonna go down here to working drawings. So this is the same drawing that I uploaded and I was assigning issues in the field called sectional drawing. Remember, this could be a PDF as well. Now I already have a lot of issues you can already see uh, on the screen, but uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a new one. I'm gonna zoom over here to uh, around this road intersection at the very edge of my imagery in the file, close enough. And notice at the bottom, I can create a markup or and or an issue. Well, I don't really need to mark up. I just need to assign uh, or assign to myself or someone else, maybe the server in charge, what evidence I collected at this section corner, this monument, wherever. So I'm gonna go click issue. And it says tap to place the issues. I'm just gonna place near there. All right, and so 
when I get to the title, I can um, type here or notice we have the voice to text. We'll try that real quick. Monument found. Something like that. And then in the description, we'll do the voice to text again. And you have to stop talking before you hit the button. Pin farm. Good, it did spell pin correctly. And of course, I added that. I can assign this to Jerry. All kind of other location info. But now we're going to do the photo. So I've got some props set up over here. And uh, to see this monument, let's take a look and hit the photo button. So you can see here, we have a cap pin, we have a, a nail with ribbon, we have a metal disc and we have an Autodesk disc all on this concrete monument here, which is actually cardboard and some other surveyor left uh, their brand new plumb bob as well, which we'll take that with us. So I'm gonna take one photo here, zoomed in, and then maybe I back out a little bit and take a bigger context photo. So now hit done and notice at the top, I can rotate the image or I could mark it up. And to me, that's huge. You know, if you had, if you were taking a picture of something very complex, like a bridge bearing or something like that, you could mark it up either photo or both. So I'm just going to hit the blue button. And now that will assign uh, that uh, two or those two photos to this issue. And I hit create. And now we have that issue. You can see here. Uh, right on the, um, the screen. And that issue has been assigned to Jerry and Jerry's going to get an email about that. And it's going to say, Hey, you have until tomorrow to address this. And in this case, it's not really anything to address. This is really more documentation of evidence. And I'll show you some other examples out here. So if I zoom into this corner, this was actual real evidence taken. So this was a, a, a piece of iron or a railroad spike in the middle of the road. So I took one photo on top and one uh, back backed up so you could see more data or more context. Okay. And the great thing is this is stored in perpetuity. All this history, when did, when did I take that photo? When did I take that issue? Time and date, everything's time stamped. Uh, we don't lose anything. So you can see all the evidence as I went around the uh, section there. You can see all the different issues that, uh, that I took. So let's go now and we'll stop the share of the iPhone. And now that we have collected that data, what does that look like back in the office? Well, let's go into working drawings. We'll go into that sectional drawing again. There we go. And uh, again, I could hide these markups if I don't want to see the markups, you know, and I can hide all the issues as well. But here are all the issues. This was a different type of issue, and but these were all evidence issues. Notice already this is sync. If I click on this new issue here on the screen, uh, assigned to Jerry, and I go to attachments, there's my pen farm. Out at that location. And uh, the fact that that's in a house, we're going to have to move that house, by the way. So that's... We'll start demolition on that soon. We'll take a look at a few more just so you can see some of what uh, was actually collected, real data versus a cardboard box. So here was a call that had been in, uh, this had been for since the 1920s. There'd been a, a, an iron bar called out here and I got a good photo of it. So there's an iron bar that had been called in uh, since the 20s and 30s, which was awesome. Okay, so all this thing, everything's documented. Everything is geo-referenced in a, in a sense, right? And so if you think about the things that I could collect and could reference and log, uh, the possibilities are limitless uh, with issues here and markups even. And there's so many things you could do with it. So hope that makes sense on field versus office and getting back. And um, the last thing I wanted to talk about is that additional use case that I mentioned. Um, and again, I, I like to just think, okay, what else could I do with these things? And uh, when I was doing this project, I was working with another surveyor 
uh, piecing these old deeds together because I have deeds from the twenties and I have deeds from two years ago. So piecing that all together and knowing what's good, what's bad, you really, a lot of times it's better just to draw it out, uh, even for yourself uh, to remind you to, so you have a reference from the, for the decisions that you made. So let's take a look at that. So I built another drawing in the cloud here called deed work. Okay, very similar drawing with sectional data in it. But notice at the top, I've got color-coded deeds because again, so many ages in deeds and uh, overlapping issues. So very clearly, so this think about a real estate person or someone that's just working on the uh, record information, going in and drawing these deeds in AutoCAD. So with the survey deed here in green, you can see that's drawn in with a very nice uh, decimal points here uh, and notes were made. So for the green deed, existing railroad, uh, railroad spike was called as a section corner, the northwest corner. And if you look at the blue deed up here, that's another survey deed. It calls the same uh, corner to start with. And then we have the parent tracks here in magenta. Uh, they're not really drawn because they're aliquot part. There's no courses and bearings and distance or any of that, right? So you're just drawn as boxes. But what a great way to document, you know, uh, for myself and especially for others or an approving surveyor. So when they come back and look at this, they're like, okay, I've got two good deeds here and I've got two old deeds. Well, I want to look at the green deed here, the good survey deed from 20, uh, 2002. Well, I made an issue just to link to that attachment. So remember I had the deed stored in the document management folder structure. I went ahead and linked it to an issue. It's kind of a backwards way to go. And that's fine. You can link to folders in our cloud. So here is the survey golf deed. Got two pages here that I can review. And I can say, okay, I see why they decided to, to hold that, blah, blah, blah. Notice this awesome button here called return. It will return me right back where I was because Remember that hyperlink there, it browsed me over to the document management folder where that deed was sitting. Same thing here. I want to see the 2017 deed. Go to attachments, click the PDF. It just pops me over to that folder, right? But thanks to the return button, I can go directly back without any trouble. Okay. So these issues were used just to document and make a link between uh, the deeds and the drawing just so deed sketch and and uh, all of my decision making cad i call it is all in one spot so that a reviewer can come in and say yeah totally i see why you held this pin here now uh, that pin was called in two survey deeds and the other deeds are aliquot part from the 20s so of course you held that pin capped uh athens land survey right and so you remember i talked about the issues list I close here and go back to the issues list. Remember, if these issues were assigned to me, I would only see my issues. I'm only seeing a ton here because they're issues that uh, I've assigned, been assigned to me. I'm a project administrator, so I'm seeing everything. So I could easily, just as easy, go up here and um, change the type. So I could say this type of, uh, I only want to see this type of issue, this status of issue, uh, and so on. So I can narrow down and only see uh, the, uh, the uh, issues that are related to the parent track here. You can see here's one here. So I'm going straight to that. So I can get to that same spot, not even being in the drawing. And maybe I don't even know where the drawing is. I go to the issue and say, well, where, what drawing is that linked to? Well, this is what's awesome about this hyperlink. It goes straight to the drawing. All right. So we're getting very close to the top of the hour. I'm going to just jump back to the agenda very quickly and review. So we did a quick uh, review of the, an overview of the BIM 360 cloud platform for those that were not familiar and, uh, you know, told how we're going to focus in on just the document management module, kind of the central piece, the backbone of the cloud. We talked about getting data in the cloud. Once you have it in the cloud, what can you do in the office with it within that browser view? 
and assigning those work issues, right? I assigned some work for a particular crew to do. Then in the field, we showed how all that data that I put in there is now at my fingertips, that reference data that I may need while I'm out there. You know, so many times you go out there and know, oh, I'm going to find this. And so I don't need all this other stuff. And then you go out there and you can't find a pin that was referenced six months ago. And you're like, how could that not be here? Happens all the time. We all know it. So having that reference data to back up and say, well, okay, where is that pin? Let me, I, mean, I need more info. Documenting that evidence. We documented the evidence we found on the section corners, the property corners, fence, uh, pro, um, fence lines and fence corners. When we talk about possession lines, all that could be documented with photos and markups through that issue system. And then what's awesome, as soon as I take that photo and submit that issue, uh, if I'm assigning it to someone, they get the email, but also that data sync. So immediately I could call someone back at the office and say, hey, look at this. Uh, look at this iron bar. Does it, this doesn't, you know, this iron bar is a, you know, solid steel and it's brand new. This doesn't look like a 1920s iron bar. So things like that, you could immediately have a conversation with the office because they could click on that issue and review that photo data. And then lastly, we went into that additional case. Uh, where we uh, took that record data and made a hodgepodge of um, the drawing of all the record data and linked it to the um, actual paper data, the deed description data, so that we had a one-stop shop drawing for all that research when we were putting those deeds together. So that is all we have for today. We really appreciate you spending uh, some time with us. We hope it's been beneficial. And at this time, um, I hope all the questions were answered. If not, we will address those uh, after the call finishes. But again, we appreciate everyone's time and I hope you have a great day.